Dominion family and friends, good morning. It's a good day. As the scripture tells us, how good and how pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in unity. Also, this is a day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. It's a good opportunity to give the Lord to praise and to worship him in the beauty of holiness. We love the Lord and our desire is to praise him every chance and every opportunity we get on a 24 seven basis. So there's not a time where we cannot praise the Lord. So I'm just here today just to give you another word of encouragement and just to share with you as we go into this week, this week is marked the Passion Week or the Holy Week, and it begins with Palm Sunday. So I want to talk to you today just in reference to where is your passion for Christ? So Passion Week is also called, as I said earlier, uh, Holy Week. It takes place between Palm Sunday and Easter Sunday, or for believers, what we know as Resurrection Sunday. Why is it called Passion Week? It represents the passion in which Jesus willingly went to the cross. He did this to pay for our sins. The accounts of Passion Week is recorded in all four Gospels. In Matthew chapters 21 through 27, in Mark chapters 11 through 15, in St. Luke chapters 19 through 23, and in St. John chapters 12 through 19. During Passion Week, it begins with the triumphant entry of our Lord riding on a donkey into the city of Jerusalem. It's recorded in and prophesied in Zechariah chapter 9, verse 9, which says, Rejoice greatly, O daughters of Zion. Shout, O daughters of Jerusalem. Behold, your king is coming to you. He is just and having salvation, lowly and riding on a donkey. So today I want to walk you through each day of the final week of Christ's life on earth. Palm Sunday is the beginning of the Passion Week and Jesus' finally agonizing journey on his, to his crucifixion. The disciples brought the donkey as he requested and placed their coats on the back of the donkey and there Jesus sat. Jesus making his public entry into Jerusalem not to be uh, respected, but to be rejected. When Jesus was approaching the city, he wept over it. There was only three times recorded where Jesus actually wept. When Lazarus died, Lazarus is the brother of Mary and Martha, but when he died in St. John chapter 11, Jesus wept. While approaching the city of Jerusalem, as in our text, Jesus wept. And while praying in the garden of Gethsemane, also as recorded in Luke chapter 22, it shows that Jesus wept. He wept over the city because he saw the destruction that was going to take place some years later. That's, that's also known in our history in AD uh, 70, where the temple and Jerusalem was destroyed. But now here, as he entered the city, a very large crowd spread their coats on the road, while others cut down palm branches from the trees and spread them on the road. Hence, we call Palm Sunday. The crowd shouted, Hosanna to the son of David. Blessed is he that come in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. All of that took place on Sunday. And Sunday evening, okay, following Jesus' arrival into Jerusalem, he spent Sunday night in Bethany, in the village that is just right outside of Mount uh, Olive. And so there on his journey uh, toward Bethany, he noticed a fig tree that had produced uh, leaves ahead of his season. And when he got closer to the fig tree, he saw that there was no, uh, that there was no figs. So he cursed the tree. And then on the Monday, going back into the city, into the temple, uh, there to do some teaching, he noticed that there was no, uh, that the uh, fig tree had withered. And so it spoke to his authority and to his power to produce. And because the fig tree didn't produce, he cursed it. So on Tuesday, Jesus was uh, teaching in the temple, okay? And uh, they had conspired to trap and, and escalate him. They, they wanted, they wanted, they, mm, the whole, on Holy Tuesday, let me, let me repeat myself so we can understand. On Holy Tuesday, uh, the conspiracies to trap Jesus escalated. And Israel religious leaders had one goal. They wanted to get rid of Jesus of Nazareth. Okay. The Pharisees, the Herodians, and even the Sadducees attempted to discredit Jesus. 
Jesus warned the crowd and the disciples about the hypocrisy and unbelief of the nation's religious leaders. On Wednesday, the Wednesday before his crucifixion, it was the first day Judas Iscariot first conspired with the Sanhedrins to betray Jesus. He sold Jesus out for 30 pieces of silver. On Thursday, Thursday, Jesus served uh, the last meal with his disciples. And this was the last meal prior to his arrest and crucifixion. It's often called the Last Supper. And the scripture records, and he took bread and break it and gave thanks and said, this is my body, which is broken for you. As often as you eat it, it do show forth the remembrance of me until I come again. And in the same manner, he took the cup and said, this cup, the New Testament, which is my blood, which was shed for you. Again, as often as you eat my flesh and drink my blood, it will show forth the remembrance of me until I come again. But while in that last supper with his disciples, he said unto them, this is the last meal we'll have together. And the next meal we'll have together again will be when we reside in the kingdom of God. Jesus, in, in, this, uh, in this session, Jesus had provided a very important principle of living for his disciples. He said to them, we came to serve and not to be served. And so that was an important lesson of uh, servanthood to the people of God, that we must remember that our responsibility is to serve, is to help and, is, and to work with others, but not to always just be served. And he modeled this by washing uh, the feet of the disciples. Okay, so from there, Jesus went to the Garden of Gethsemane to pray and wait for his hour to come. And while there in the garden in, in agony, the scripture says that uh, he prayed intensely and uh, sweat ran down his face like drops of blood. But in his prayer, he cried out to the Father and said, Father, forgive them. Uh, he, he, in his prayer, he said, Father, if it be possible, let this cup pass from me. Nevertheless, not my will, but thy will be done. It was here that Jesus, having been betrayed by Judas, he was arrested and taken to, through several trials that he went through. He endured six trials, the scriptures record. Three trials was by the Jewish leaders and three by the Romans. During this time, Jesus survived uh, painful beatings and, and whippings and mocking. Okay, Pilate handed Jesus over to be crucified. Jesus also was mocked by the soldiers as they dressed him and placed crown of thorns upon his head. So all of that took place on Thursday. Now on Friday, which we call Good Friday, Jesus was crucified on Golgotha, which means the place of the skull, on a hill right outside of Jerusalem. The sky turned dark from the sixth hour to the ninth hour. The scriptures revealed his seven last remarks, his seven last sayings that was recorded. First, he said, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. Secondly, Jesus said, unto the thief that was also hanging there. He said, today you shall be with me in paradise. Thirdly, Jesus said uh, unto his mother, behold thy son. Then he said to his disciples, behold your mother. Then he said uh, in his prayer while hanging there on the cross, he said, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? And number five, hanging there, he said, I thirst followed by, it is finished. And his last words that he spoke, Father, into thy hands I commit my spirit. And there he died. Peter took account of this and wrote and said uh, in 1 Peter 1, verses 18 and 19, for you know that God paid a ransom to save you from the empty life you inherited from your ancestors. And the ransom he paid was not mere gold or silver. He paid for you with the precious life blood of his son, Jesus Christ, the sinless, spotless lamb of God. The blood of Jesus Christ is absolutely the most precious thing God had offered to us. Then there came Holy Saturday. Saturday, 
of the Passion Week. We remember the time Jesus spent in the tomb. So they sealed the tomb and posted guards to protect it. Okay, And then Sunday. Okay, It was a time to remember the events of Jesus between Palm Sunday and his resurrection. We see the passion Jesus lived and the passion that he had when he died. We can share in Jesus' passion through our worship of him and our proclamation of his gospel. So Palm Sunday, Palm Sunday and Palm Week or the Holy Week gives us a time to reflect each day. This is what he went through for us. Each day, each day where he was persecuted, where he was whipped or where he uh, uh, taught his disciples concerning the last days and wanted them to remember his life, wanted them to remember his suffering, wanted them to remember the persecutions and to let them know and to let us know that even as Christ suffered in the flesh, we can arm ourselves likewise and be ready and be prepared that we'll let nothing separate us from the love of God. What he did for us, we also can give our lives for someone else. Palm Sunday serves as a preparation for our heart for the agony of his passion and for the joy of his resurrection. So I remind you, where is your passion? Do you have the same intense? Do you have the strong desire to say, for Christ I live and for Christ I die? Do you have that same intensity that says, no matter what's going on, I'm going to endure the hardness as a good soldier? Do you have that intensity, that drive, that passion to say, for Christ I live and I'll give my all for the world? In the times that we're living in, our passion needs to be reflected and to let others know that Christ is the Savior of the world. There's none other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved except the name of Jesus. For at the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Where is your passion today? I declare unto you to lift up the name of Jesus. And if you lift him up, he will draw others unto him. This is our time. This is our season, y'all, that what's going on around us, we can reflect, we can share, we can testify, we can proclaim that Jesus is the savior of the world. Jesus is our deliverer from our troubles and from our sorrows. Jesus is our healer from our pain and our agonies, from all of our suffering, just as he died for us. So he said, come unto me, all you that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. So let us take a time and just take this moment and pray and ask God, one, to come into our lives, to ask God for, for those who are not saved to come into our lives and, and bring salvation. And for us who are believers, ask God to give us strength to endure the hardness of this season. For we are the children of God. So, Father, I pray. I pray for everyone that's listening in. And I pray, Lord, that you move mightily in their lives. Forgive sin, Lord. Blot out every transgression, move the iniquities that people are struggling with in their lives. In this world, Lord, uh, through the hardness, Lord, forgive us and let us mount up with wings as eagles that we can stand strong, Lord, and endure the hardness. Let every believer, Lord, be reminded of this week, Lord, and let the passion ring out that they can glorify and praise you in the name of Jesus. For this is a day of victory, and we have overcome by the power of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, and amen. I want to thank all of you all, all of you all that uh, was part of the teleconference on last night. I want to thank you for the good times, the laughter, the joy that we had. Thank you for uh, calling in and letting us hear your voice. I love being connected, and it's our season of connection and so let's, let's stay connected with one another. Let's continue to call on and check on one another. Let's let different ones know how much we love and miss them. Also, I want to say to you, y'all, this is a challenge for me. This uh, re recording services and putting them out there is just, it's just a hard thing. And so I'm learning as we go. So you all pray for pastor. 
Pray for me that as we learn and as we grow, that we'll get better and better. And yet the word of God will always stand true in our hearts. So know that I love you. Know that I miss you and we'll stay connected. God bless you in Jesus name. Amen.